uh, let's enter a bill. Now, this is going to be paying the vendors, right? So a bill is going to increase the accounts payable. So here's uh, New Jersey Power, right? So let's say that's going to be $100. Now, it won't let me leave the screen until I associate it with an account. Watch. If I pick on Save and Close, it says it has to be associated with an account. So uh, that would be, I bet I have utilities in there. Exactly. Right? So that's where the chart of accounts comes in. And when I pick on Save and Close now, the accounts receivable will be over here now. In the, in the balances. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick on my shortcuts and then pick on view balances again. And now we see the accounts payable is $100. So when we enter a bill, that's going to, um, that's going to increase the accounts payable. And then, uh, of course, eventually I'm going to pay the bill, which will then decrease the main checking account. The other way to put a bill in it is to receive it against inventory. So I'm going to make a, a purchase order. And so let's say, let's say uh, I'm looking at Amazon and I'm going to type in Amazon here. I'm going to add this one on the fly. I'm going to do a quick add. I do this all the time. So Amazon is having a tremendous sale on keyboards, right? So I'm going to pick on keyboards. And uh, now I'm usually paying $4 for those, right? Remember how we put that in the product table. So I want 100 keyboards but they're selling it to me at $3 because they're Amazon. So I, I'm going to change you on this particular order. Now it says, do I want to update the actual product? No, it's just for this particular one. So I'll say no. The, the actual item will still say $4, but I just, for this one order, it's three. And guess what? Amazon is also selling a, a mouse. I want to get some of those as well. Now, this is going to tell me that has to be added to the items table. See how I was keeping track of everything? This is how I add QuickBooks. I, I'm always adding things in the fly. I have to add that to the products table. So that's going to be an inventory part. I can buy the mouse for $2, and I can sell it for $5. And that's to be against income, uh, against um, sales for hardware. Is the income account. I don't have any on hand yet, but I will pretty soon. Good. So it keeps you pretty honest. All the screens, like, uh, you know, when we made that sale, I had to go against uh, uh, one of the chart of accounts. When we, when we just did the bill for the electric company, it had to be tied to utility. So everything has to be tied to one of those accounts, as you can see. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and do the purchase order. Now, the purchase order itself doesn't increase anything. It's just an order. Notice that the accounts payable did not go up. When we receive the inventory, that's when the uh, accounts will be adjusted. So I want to receive the inventory with a bill. I'm looking at the package, and the package is from Amazon. Now, it's going to remember that I have that, that um, purchase order out there. Do I want to receive against that purchase order? Yes. And there's the purchase order. Good. And then it'll fill in the screen for me. Now, a lot of times, let's say I order 100 keyboards, but only 50 came in. Well, then I'll just adjust the screen right over here. So it knows that you would accept partial shipments. You would just adjust the quantities uh, on the screen as necessary. It'll keep track of all that. So here's what's going to happen. My Accounts payable is going to go up by $500, so that's going to become $600 now, and the inventory items should go up. We're ordering keyboards and mouse, and those should both go up now. So I'll do save and close. Notice how the accounts payable went up to $600. Let's take a look at the inventory. I think I had 44 keyboards before. Now I have 144 keyboards and 100 mouse. Right, so check that out. It's really managing all of those for us. Now, at some point, we have to pay our bills, right? So if, if you follow both of those paths, it's going to go over here. Eventually, we have to pay the bills. When we pay the bills, that's going to make the accounts payable go down, and that'll make the checking go down as well. So let's pay the bills. 
you can pay, you can pick and choose which bills are going to be paid, right? So I can check both of those. Now look what's going to happen. You want to make sure you pick the proper bank account down here, of course, and it's going to tell you what the ending balance is going to be. So I have enough uh, in my account. I'm going to pay both of those bills. At this point, I'll pick on pay selected bills. Good. So watch what happened, everybody. The accounts payable went down to zero, but my main checking went down by that amount as well. Uh, now, at this point, yes, we told QuickBooks that we paid that bill, but you still have to cut the check, or maybe you're going to pay them online. So uh, in this case, we can let QuickBooks uh, print the checks. I'll just go through that really quickly for you. You tell it which checks that you want to print. Now, in my office, I have a printer for my plain paper, and I have a separate printer for the checks. This way, I don't have to keep on going back and switching back and forth, okay? So that's what I would recommend to you. You don't have to use Intuit's checks. You could use your bank's checks. They'll be fine. I'll click on OK. And then you can actually print the checks, okay? Let's just see. I want to print it to a PDF file for a second. Just see what the checks would look like. It is going to, let's pretend that it's printing. It's going to make a PDF file in just a second. And uh, we'll see what that looks like. Oh, it says, do I want to save that PDF? I'll just call them uh, checks. And now it is printing to that PDF. And we'll see what that looks like in just a second. So yes, you, you tell QuickBooks that you paid that bill but you're either actually going to pay them online or, you know, you print the check out here so they actually get paid in real life as well. Okay, good. So then if you needed to, you can reprint the checks. Excellent. So I'm going to go ahead. I don't really need to reprint the checks, but you could if you needed to. Uh, actually, if, if you uh, wait a second, it's going to show you what the, ch the check is going to look like. So this is uh, Adobe here. It's fine. Okay, good. There's the actual checks. Now imagine your bank account routing number and your account number will be printed on the check, right? QuickBooks isn't going to print those items, but that information is already going to be on the check. And then here's the stub. So that worked out pretty well. And then I'm sure on the next page, it has the next check. Exactly right. So I'm going to close that window. So there's the second check. So that was a, a, a huge part of the accounts payable cycle. You can either enter the bills this way. That's just for your normal bills, like the electric company and things like that. Up here, I made the purchase order, and then I received the inventory. That made a bill. That also adjusted the inventory. And then at, at some point, you would pay the bills. Notice when we pay the bills, the accounts payable went to zero, and the checking decreased as well. So now you have a good idea about the accounts payable cycle and the accounts receivable cycle. Now, um, I want to show you something that's called a memorized transaction. So let's go back into that bill. Now, remember, if I want to go back to the previous ones, I could either do a find over here, or I can go back or back and forth with these arrows. So I'm going to pick on back. There's the Amazon bill. Let's go back again. There's the New Jersey power bill. So let's say every month, um, I get a bill from New Jersey Power, and it's always for hundred dollars. So I'm just using this as an example, okay? Then that might be a great use of what we call a memorized transaction. I use the memorized transactions a lot. This way, that'll actually enter that for you at a certain point. So I'm going to pick on memorize that bill. So here's the best way to use this. I'm going to say automate transaction entry. That way, it'll put that bill in there for me. So I want that to happen monthly, or you can see there's different time periods. So now I just did the one for June, right? So the next time I want that to happen is going to be July. Don't pick the same month because we already have a bill for that month. The next one I want to be is July. So when July 2nd comes around and I go into QuickBooks, it's going to tell me that that uh, bill is ready to be entered and it'll fill in all of that information for me. It's going to save me a lot of time. These are called memorized transactions. All right. So the way I got to that, on a lot of these screens, you'll see the word memorize. So I can uh, memorize invoices or uh, bills, you know, something that is recurring. That'll save you a lot of time. I, I use that one quite a bit. 